Welcome, Pathfinders, to the Find the Path podcast actual play of the Tales from Darkmoon Vale, Hollow's Last Hope, Episode 6. Nice. Woo. We made it to right. the sixth A one. creepy monastery. Lucky number six. Yeah. And yeah. why is everything always lucky or unlucky with you, Rick? Six is lucky compared to five other numbers on a D20. Because we play a game that's literally just luck. <laughs> mm. It's not literally just luck. It is a lot of luck. It is for me when you roll a lot of nat ones. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's math plus luck. But yes. uh, to give a brief recap of last time's events, Foxtrot Squadron made their way into the... <laughs> I like calling you all that. It's great. Check uh, your corners. Right. Check your corners. <laughs> <laughs> made your way into the monastery grounds. You inspected the outside, the courtyard outside, taking a look at a number of tracks as well as a well that uh, had a probably not another dead Jagare, but you were unable to confirm that. They're all Jagares. And they're all dead. <laughs> so so many dead Jagares. It's really a wonder that the Jagare line continues because they're all dead, apparently. <laughs> it is true. They're, they're they, yeah. uh, they have their own android foundry. They're all just secretly androids. They've just been spitting them out and sending them <laughs> off adventuring. I look forward to making my Starfinder android, Jagare X9. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. I, I kind of love that idea. I'm just like, the Jagare is a million Jigare. years in the future. I like it. All right. Well, just, Starfinder Society is calling for you. Yep. They just turn them out in the mm-hmm. Akatonian Jagare plant. <laughs> like, well, need another Jagare. Let's print one out real quick. I guess yep. they 3D print you. I don't know. Anyway, so from there, uh, you inspected the field, found some gear at the very least, and also confirmation that there are more wolf tracks as well as possibly kobolds. Kobolds. Yeah, we realized Weird that Grim kobolds. hates kobolds. Yeah, he's not a fan, it seems. I've got good reason. Technically, I know that, but maybe... Anyway. I know. Yeah. It's a future roleplay opportunity. Ah, fancy. Then you went to the watchtower. Then we fought a spider. It was yes, terrible. Right. <laughs> it was the shortest fight ever, though. I was about to say, <laughs> yes. I don't think it technically even lasted a round. Uh, Celestine just slashed it up. I don't yes, think it technically it lasted a initiative turn. It, it's yeah. kind of yep. like when you see a spider in your house or, or some people, because I don't have this reaction, but I imagine Heather would have this reaction where just you scream and then swat at it with whatever you've got and then just hope and pray you got it. Fight or flight took over. I usually run. I'm not going to lie. Mm. <laughs> so flight in Heather's case. Yeah. I, yeah. Run. Find someone Celestine, else. Celestine, though, with will it. fight. <laughs> you then uh, sent Estrella to climb to the top of the tower, see what was up there, basically. She found a sack, which you spent ages debating about whether or not you were going to open it. That was a little <laughs> bit of an editorial note from me, but <laughs> mostly just sitting there going, I wonder if they're ever going to actually open this or just talk about it for a while. For the audience, I edited it down, so it seemed much faster. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, welcome audience. audience. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, these people are so snappy with their decisions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you open the bag, though, to find a short sword. I believe uh, currently Estrella is rocking that short sword. She is indeed. It is magical as well. So that's awesome. And then you made your way into the monastery proper. You decided to be a bit discretionary with uh, fighting some bats. and Yeah, just let them sleep. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. bat friends. They didn't seem like a threat to the town. So really, eh. Not Hopefully there was tonight. nothing useful in there. Bats they eat mosquitoes, therefore bat equals good. Mm-hmm. That's true. We did identify their insectivores. You then discovered the armory, and then almost like a magnet, Celestine was drawn directly to a secret wall or a secret <laughs> door really in the wall. That was really insane, by the way. Yeah. I yeah. was like, hey, you know, secret doors are a thing dwarves do. Oh, look, here's one. Yeah. <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> a, little, a little ironic timing there. <laughs> she just knows where the door where the doors are. <laughs> On well, the second thing that I miss about uh, first edition dwarves mm-hmm. is that automatic uh, stone cunning detect secret doors in stone within 10 feet of me. Yeah. Yep. Put that but right next f- to my ability to get tripped. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, yeah. Did, did the poor dwarf fall down? I mean, so did you. I recall yes. you were rolling on the ground next to me. I know, but, yeah. you know, you've got to be like, this wouldn't have worked in first edition. <laughs> man, Whatever man. else, I don't have as far to fall. <laughs> <laughs> Half elf. 
I still, still probably weigh like five eight. Tall, though. Yeah, <laughs> she's yeah, she's five foot seven. She's pretty tall. Yeah, yep. she's according yeah. to Jordan, she is snuggle size. Remember? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep, I stand by that comment. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, we already had heard, the HR meeting over that. I forgot that, and it broke me a second time. Uh, <laughs> Good job, Jordan. Oh, jeez. All right, you found Going the... Going to a weird place. Yeah, well... Um, we fought some dwarven found, skeletons in the secret door yes, passage. Oh, yeah. In the secret jailhouse, you yeah. found the, some dwarven skeletons. Three of them rose from the dead to fight you. One strangely One of them did didn't. not. He did bear a ring with a ruby carved in the symbol of Torag on his finger. I think Grim has that now, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. I am wearing that, yes. He? And and yes, we found some of the mushrooms correct. that we needed, but not yes, we, we needed two. what? We needed, we needed six, seven, seven. We found two. Yes. So did we, uh, more exploring I, to do. Did we identify that ring? Uh, no, I saw it written down as question mark okay. ring. You, yeah, I, didn't I think believe we were time. able to identify it was an abjuration effect, but beyond that, you're yes. not certain. Yeah. Do we have the time to identify this ring? I think the plan was to uh, wait until the next time I had to use my lay on hands to heal somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just that be like, sense. oh, well, yeah, we have to take out 10 minutes sense. anyway. Because it does that take 10 sense. minutes to do so. So from there... We'll pick up, and you're still traveling down the first corridor that you came across. There is still one door to your right you haven't entered into yet before the corridor takes a 90-degree 90 90 degree turn and starts going south. I think we should probably check this last door before we make our way towards the entrance. Uh, Agreed. We had, we had determined that, right? That the uh, hallway seems to be making its way and then turning left towards where the front door is? That's what it seems like, yes. At the very least, okay. this would be some strange non-Euclidean monastery if it wasn't. <laughs> mm. I do like non-Euclidean things. Big surprise. MC, yeah. That's MC how you Escher's. know it's evil. <laughs> Celestine will make her way towards the door since, you know, she's the rogue with the trap spotting. It is, surprisingly enough, literally next door to where you came out from. You don't even have to walk more than five feet to get to it. Nice. Convenient. Fine dwarven architecture <laughs> with conserving space. Do I see any traps? So, taking a look at the door, you don't sense any traps on it. Celestine opens the door. The door creaks open easily in this case. It looks like this door's opened up quite a bit recently. There's practically no dust on it. Be on your guard. Opening the door, you find yourself faced with a small study. The study appears to have been lived in, and very recently, bones litter the floor here from a variety of different animals, and honestly, possibly human as well. It's hard to tell just because of the sheer variety of bones scattered here. Tufts of gray fur can be seen here and there, and in the corner sits an old writing desk. It looks like it was shoved up against the wall rather than uh, being a sort of thing that was normally placed there. There is also an open doorway into a room to the left. In other words, to the west from here. There are no occupants in this chamber. I think this is where the wolves stay. If I pick up a tuft of fur, can I identify this as like lupine? Do you lick it? Yes. Or... Honest... <laughs> Probably sniff it. You're a werewolf now. Jeez. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's how... You know what? Never mind. It's fine. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'll be easily identifiable when they're just like, it's like, I wonder who is this really short, broad shouldered werewolf running about. <laughs> but it's the dwarf. <laughs> There's a werewolf with an amazingly impressive beard. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that would Epic. be amazing. Would you really keep the beard? No, oh, probably not. I know rules is written, probably not, but I'm saying yes. <laughs> yes, you do. By rules uh, of headcanon, yes. Anyway. I guess that what would that be a uh, recall? I'm actually going to go in and give it to you just because you very recently encountered them outside. This does look like fur from a wolf just because it's the same pattern and type from the wolves that you saw not more than an hour ago. Mm, more timber wolves. The door was closed, wasn't it? The door was closed, though it opened easily enough. And we still don't know how they got in here because the doors to the courtyard while shabby were still in place until we knocked them over. They're very good at opening we, I think Celestine doors. knocked them over. <laughs> yes. Uh, se- seemingly silly question. Is the door open in or out of the room? 
It would open into it, wouldn't it? The door opens in. Okay. Yes. These are lawful dwarves. They're not going to have doors open into hallways. That's how you <laughs> smack somebody. That's how I you create know. a fire. I'm, just, I'm wondering issue. how wolves with their lack of opposable thumbs were able to get in and get out and somebody, possibly close this door. Somebody's I like Jessica's idea that it's like someone's tied like little ropes to all the doors. <laughs> so that they can yeah. help you. Like, I mean, that's, yeah, that's totally a thing. <laughs> are there ropes on the door handle on the inside? <laughs> Yes, actually, there are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I have another silly question, if you like, Ross. Yeah, sure. Lay it on me. Just because we are dealing with wargs, does it look like any of these wolves have been perusing the books recently? So the writing desk does have a number of small books and papers and even a few ink pens still. All of these are caked with dust, though. You don't think anyone's looked at them since the desk was moved here. Okay, because I really like the idea of the warg like sitting in a nice lounge chair or something, <laughs> reading some books after leading his pack around. Oh my god! I'm sad that that's not the case. It doesn't appear to be, at least not here. If it does read, maybe it goes to a library somewhere. Yeah, there's another door. <laughs> there's an open doorway to the west. Okay, so maybe they're not going through the courtyard we came through. Maybe that's like a back entrance for them. Could be. We should maybe check this room, see if there's anything of use for us here. Uh, Amaranth will blast off a detect magic. I'm going to search around, I guess. Maybe check some of the bottom shelves and such, see if there's any water damage, moisture buildup. Maybe some of the mushrooms have sprouted here as well. Okay, so first things first, detecting magic, there is a new magical aura within 30 feet of you. Ooh, there's magic somewhere. All right, Amaranth will begin looking for the magic because unfortunately, second edition Detect Magic doesn't tell him where it is. Nope, just tells you that there is, not where. Yep, so it's time to search. Lame. <laughs> I actually find it an improvement personally. From a GM standpoint, I, I can yeah. understand from a player standpoint. I think you should be able to at least get a general direction. Like you can yeah, sense like a the ping. magic. Yeah, like a, like a ping. Like, okay, it's in on that side of the room. Like, yeah, like that would be cold. fine. <laughs> warmer warmer no, cold. cold 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 <laughs> ice cold antarctica uh, <laughs> so clove going ahead and make a perception check <laughs> i roll terribly and i get a one um four wait i'm an expert so i rolled a one for a seven all right with a seven taking a look clove you don't find anything of interest although celestine you can roll a perception check uh, Amaranth, you can roll a perception check as well if you'd like. I roll a 17 for a 20. And Celestine? Uh, Celestine rolls an 18 for a 23. Okay. The two of you start combing, paying a great deal of attention over to the desk because it's really the only place that you could easily hide something unless maybe just enough dust caked on top of something really, really thin, like a piece of paper or something. A scroll! But other than the, uh, <laughs> well, there is no scroll. Well, I mean, there are, there are parchment papers, but none of them are scrolls. And so far as that one Sad. would think of a magical scroll. Uh, so the two of you basically focus on the desk. And at approximately the same time, you both reach for a drawer. Probably. Ah. Oh. <laughs> it's a little spark that goes between our pinkies. <laughs> they touch. <laughs> Hands. The two of you... At the same time, touch the bottom of a drawer to move it with enough pressure that you feel a small release catch underneath your fingers. Oh, no. Trap! Uh oh The Wait, she's a, she's a rogue. You. The false bottom of the drawer opens up. Oh, And okay. there's some stuff that's in there. Poo. Aw. Yeah, it wasn't a trap. Oh, that's good news. would have been way more exciting. Well, <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Celestine smirks. Rachel demands you trap this. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Rocks fall. No, I, I was just expecting like the the drawer to like pop up or something. You know. I was half expecting it to be a mimic. Um, but <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. Celestine smirks at Amaranth since they found it at the same time. Reunite. <laughs> <so far. laughs> I don't know. What's in the but checking what's in inside? The, yeah, as I in assume it? you do. What's in the drawer? Okay. What's in the box? Yeah. Checking inside. <laughs> somebody was gonna do it. Somebody was definitely gonna do it, and that somebody was Rick. Opening up the false bottom drawer, uh, you find the following items: a single Ooh. hatchet. Wow, there's a big false bottom to this drawer. Yeah, it, it is, actually. I mean, the hatchet is still fairly small. It's maybe about a foot and a half long overall. Mm. But, I mean, it's but still a hatchet. 
Yeah, it is still a hatchet. I haven't had a chance to use them, but I might add that to the other three hatchets that I carry. I have a hatchet. Nice. Okay. Is Unless somebody special? else needs a hatchet. Well, we'll figure that out. Uh, there is also a small coin purse. Inside is... Money. Well, <laughs> yes, there is money inside. And money, money, prob- money, money. Probably the most money any of you have ever seen in one place before. Uh, There's oh, 10 wow. platinum Fee. pieces in here. Wow. Oh, Whoa. Yeah, cow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ross. You may have forgotten that they changed it to a silver-based economy. I am aware of that. That is ridiculous. <laughs> there oh, are ten wow. platinum pieces in here. <laughs> Let's just buy Falcon's Hollow. <laughs> good, gre- good gracious. All right, everyone take two platinum, and uh, I think I'm going to go pay my farm off. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to retire. Adventure's done. <laughs> I'm retiring at 15, everyone. Exactly. Right? Good grief. But, I can take uh, my granddaughter and go afford a priest. Anyway. <laughs> Sadly, there's not really a priest in town that's powerful enough, no matter how much money you have, though. Yeah, I know. That's how they get you. There's one last item as well, though. You pull out a small volume. This is covered in black leather with rather hastily made silver scroll and what appears to be dwarven script. What does it say? I read spellbook. Uh, So flipping through it, Celestine, you're able to make sense of it um, as you speak dwarven. If it is a spell book, this is the weirdest spell book you've ever heard of. Though admittedly, I don't know how Dang many it. spell books you've heard of. Uh, but looking through, it seems to be more a prayer book. It takes you a bit to find just because they don't necessarily mention the name of the god every single like other word. But this appears to be a prayer book dedicated to the worship of Drosgar. Uh-oh. Grim, you want to be real mad? Here's a book. I guess Grim will look up. Uh, I imagine he's probably looking through the books and everything on the wall, just kind of perusing them. Yes. Uh, Do we find something? It's a uh, prayer book to that Drosgar fellow. Uh oh. Interesting. Oh, yeah. I always thought they were too lazy to read. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a pretty low blow, but it was a good one. Um, before extending the tome out towards Grim, Grim reaches out, takes it flips it open does it look to be a standard prayer book or is it something specific maybe to this monastery so for the most part it does appear to be a standard prayer book however looking at the inside front cover there is a small note written here Uh, what do we have here the note says torag is no longer worthy of our devotion only drosgar can deliver us from the failings of king garbled King Garbled. Wait, his name was Garbled? That's hilarious. <laughs> Grim strokes his chin trying to uh, recall what he knows pertaining towards this king. Apparently that he's real bad. According to these guys, anyway. Yeah, maybe it was a moniker like Dergot the Garbled because he had a speech impediment. It's just mean. <laughs> oh, that's extra evil. Either that or he's really gluttonous and he always like talked with his mouth full. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, okay, well, I'm going to choose to believe that one. <laughs> or he was so drunk no one could understand him. Uh, anyway. That's I think his probably. name is just garbled. It's pronounced garbeld. <laughs> I really want the elf to say that to the dwarf and just see what happens. No, he's definitely not going to say that because he can't even read the name because he doesn't speak dwarvish. Thinking it over, the name King Garbled does make sense to you. Or rather, it is one you recognize. King Garbled was the king of the Five Kings Mountains right before the Forge War. Garbled was actually killed in 4369 AR by his cousin, a priest of Drosgar uh, by the name of Ordric. From what you understand, uh, Ordric had been poisoning and drugging his cousin for years in an attempt to have him see more and more control of the Five Kings Mountains to devotees of Drosgar. Hmm. Interesting. What does it say? Yeah, it seems to be a note written here. I'm going to guess by whoever was the, the priest here. It sounds like he turned from Torak's faith to worship Drosgar, believing that Drosgar could deliver them from King Garble. Uh, okay. Well, who's Who's King Gar- Garbled? Garbled, he was a dwarven king from about a hundred years or so before I was born. Uh, some three and a half centuries ago. He was murdered by his cousin, um, tied into the events of the Forge World. 
It was a dwarven civil war. Tore through the Five Kings Mountains. Uh, Draskar versus Torag? That was part of it, yes. My you grandfather won. would tell me stories. Well, I think Torak won. Unfortunately, uh, Draskar and his faith. Oh. You know, you keep saying that these followers of Draskar are very lazy, but they apparently killed a king and won a civil war. No, they killed a king via poison and won a civil war through manipulation. I mean, that's still not something someone that's so lazy they don't even want to do anything could accomplish. Mm. Conniving and less lazy? It's also efficient. Well, I think stabbing someone's more efficient. They're inclined to make others fight their battles for them, do their work for them. So they're manipulative. Um, With any god, there are numerous aspects of that deity. Uh And a follower of Droskar may follow a different variety of them. I worship the dwarven pantheon, but... I primarily worship Torag, and in that, I primarily worship Torag's position as the guardian of family and the head of the the Dwarven pantheon, the Dwarven family of gods, more so than his protection element. Someone who worshiped Drosgar may focus more on his deceitful side than his manipulative or lazy side. Well, does, does that prayer book help us with anything, or is it just here? It dates this place some. Why would they put it in a hidden thing? If this whole temple is to Draskar, it seems weird that they would hide it in a drawer. Maybe this was from the high priest of Torak here who lost his faith and began to turn his attention towards Draskar. Well, that's unfortunate. But I don't see any mushrooms in here, so... Yeah. Do we want to give it one more sweep or should we head on? Well, I did detect a magic aura, so Amaranth will, I guess, pick up the hatchet? If we can all pause for one minute, I want to see if this is magical, because there was something magical in here. Okay. It's Celestine and Amaranth's connection that is magical. <laughs> Gracious. <laughs> you, do, you do realize you've known this little elf boy for, like, less than a few days. All relationships it have to love- start somewhere. <laughs> Generally with a soft touch of the hand. And a little spark. <laughs> Got a meat mm-hmm. cute going on here. I think that just means that you've cast uh, Electric Arc one too many times, but... <laughs> <laughs> a little leftover. <laughs> a little it's static. Like, oh, sorry about the static. <laughs> it's an old trick rate. I picked up in wizard school. <laughs> FYI, by the way, the prayer book itself is worth five gold to a collector of Dwarven history. Cool. Wow. Neat. The more I hear about Droskar, the more Heather, the player, is like, gotta play a dwarf that follows no. Droskar. <laughs> no. Bad. <laughs> Concentrating your magic, Amaranth, the hand axe, the hatchet in front of you is magical. hey It also has an evocation aura upon it. Well, it's magical. I don't think it's really worth going in and identifying it right now, but maybe back at the camp. He hands it, I guess, to Grim because you have all the hatchets. Yeah, I mean, I'll add it to my other... Th- three hatchets unless somebody else wants a hatchet nope i got the sword i mean i already can they're basically my ranged option because i couldn't afford a short bow but now i've got a short bow because uh clove took the composite short bow and i'm take that took hers yeah also they're agile so clove prefers to not use them yeah i'll add it onto my belt with the other three across from my clan dagger and my hammer and i guess a bow and I'm sure i've Rockin'. got another weapon on there shuriken yeah my shurikens each one of them shaped like a tiny little sharp hammer Anyway. So there is a, oh my god there's a there's an open doorway to the west or you can just simply go back out I and mean, continue down the hallway Celestine's gonna poke her head through the open doorway poking your head through truthfully this chamber seems to have been cleared out there is no furniture inside strangely enough it's also mostly empty of dust the dust here are mostly just gathering in corners Looking around, there's actually a fair amount of light coming in from the roof. Glancing up, there are a number of minor fractures in the roof here and there. Though there isn't any debris that you see littered on the ground. Really, the only feature of this room of any interest is a stairway that descends downward. So apparently there's a basement. That's not weird, is it? No, especially in a dwarven structure now. Well, that's also dark. Probably cooler, and probably full of fungus. Oh, yeah. We should still secure this first floor before we descend. Did we miss a room? Yeah, there's a there's a passageway that we didn't the go down. The pathway right? kept going, didn't it? Yes. You yeah. can ah. continue down the original hallway to go south, and there are, in theory, at least you know some rooms that way. 
or at the very least the front entrance. We basically is that way. Ex- explored a wing. It sounds like. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we don't we want to wing. descend down, find the kobolds below, and have to retreat and still deal with wolves up here or whatever else might be here. Can't argue with that logic. Well, just mark it in your memories that the stairs are here. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's All go. Right. Sure thing, Mario. <laughs> uh, so Mario, you, what are you doing here? Whoa. You then leave and continue wandering maybe another 10 feet down the hall before it takes a 90 degree turn and goes directly south. So as you turn and take a look down the hallway, um, I believe it is Celestine in the front, correct? Yes, since I can see the traps. Cool. Yeah, Celestine and then Clove, generally. Is Celestine holding a light source, or is that behind her? I think Amaranth cast something for her. I, yeah, I have the light spell, so I okay. assume I would have given it to the person in the front. Okay, that's fine. I was just making sure. I also have a sunrod, if that's helpful. So, Celestine turning the corner. The hallway goes beyond the range of your vision. However, you do see... Glancing down a pair of double doors to your right, maybe about 15 feet down the hallway. Across from these double doors is an open entrance, possibly a front voyeur or something like that uh, for the monastery entrance proper. And then further down the hallway, maybe about another 15 feet or so past the double doors. There are a pair of doors on each side of the hallway, so one to your left and one to your right. They're practically directly across from each other. Well, we're coming up on the main foyer. Oh, um, is that a foyer? You said it all fancy like. (laughs) (laughs) In sorry, in dwarven, it's foyer. (laughs) That's really nice. I'm gonna say it like that from now on. Amaranth will will stay silent about the. the Galton influence on that word. <laughs> <laughs> Let us continue into the vestibule. Oh, I guess we will. I, yeah. We'll yeah. check whatever door we come to first, I'm sure. So well, I think it's, uh, it's going to be the double doors that lead out to the courtyard on our left. And then the archway. There's not a door. It's just an open archway that leads into the, I'm going to assume the nave. The open archway is to your left. That is, you think, leading out to the pair of double doors out front that leads into the structure. Then there's a pair of double doors to your right, which, at the very least, Grim probably suspects leads into the nave, yes. I guess we glance through the open archway to make sure it goes where we think it's going to go, and then to the closed doors, right? All right. Yeah, maybe to make sure that there's nothing barricading that door in mm. case we need to retreat. Yep. You advance, taking a glance down the left-hand side basically directly east. There does not appear to be anything blocking the doorway here. Once again, unlike a lot of other areas you've explored, this place is mostly free of dust. Looking around as well, uh, there are actually two doors um, that come off of this central uh, this central antechamber or foyer. (laughs) Because foyer. (laughs) One to the north, one to the south. There sure are a lot of doors here. They really like dwarves. Or, sorry, dwarves really like dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a rather large structure. That's true. It's the biggest thing I've ever been in. Is it a like a security measure to have it set up this way, or what? Oh, well, again, the outside of the structure should have been the most defensible point. Again, the front gate being the only entrance. Like Once you're inside, most of this would have been more for efficiency. I'll assume one of these is the coat closet. So, okay. Grim, taking a look around... Honestly, this does look fairly familiar. It's obviously mm-hmm. not this structure in particular, but dwarven monasteries, especially to Torag, are usually made with similar plans. Yep. You've seen one dwarven monastery. You've seen them all. Is it really yeah. a coat closet <laughs> on either side of the main entrance? So one side is probably a coat closet. The other side is likely some sort of waiting room in case somebody came to see a priest when it wasn't a service day. I want to check the coat closet. Maybe mm. we'll find some cool dwarven coats. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Admittedly, that can be different That'd depending be on which one. So it's hard to tell whether the coat closet in this case is the north or the south. One Both. of these should be the coat closet. The other one is probably the drunk tank. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Uh, Way to stereotype. Yeah. <laughs> check, uh, check both the doors. Yeah. So Start which one first? One. Just, yeah. North one? Opening the north door or attempting to, Celestine, you don't notice any traps, but the door is stuck. It like locked oh. or stuck. 
it seems to be stuck. If it's locked, you don't see where a key would go. So, Well, the door Clof, like, is stuck. Cracks her knuckles. I'm ready to pull this door open. So, Celestine takes a step back and gestures for Clove. Clove will come in like a wrecking All ball. Right. So, Clove, if you want to go ahead and make an athletics check yes. to force open the door, do you have a... Uh, do you have like a crowbar or anything like that? Mm, no. Does yeah, I'm really else? regretting not bringing one either. <laughs> Very I well. have a hatchet. Is that helpful? Um, not for this purpose. I have a crowbar. Oh, oh. Celestine does. Leave it to yes. the rogues. <laughs> All right, so Celestine, you can <laughs> hand that over. Pulling it out again. <laughs> Technically, you take a minus two penalty on most rolls to force something open if you don't have a tool of some kind, like a crowbar or anything like but that. But Celestine of, uh, will pull okay. a crowbar out of her backpack and hand it towards Clove. Oh, thanks. I like so, the mechanic. Um, <laughs> yeah, I rolled a fifteen for a twenty-two. Nice. nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I am trained in athletics. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's very good. So with a 22, you pop the crowbar in, give it just a solid shove. You don't even need to do suspended force as the whole thing just sort of snaps open. Okay, it's open now. Here's your crowbar back. Thank you. Well done, Clove. Sometimes the the closet and there's a basement under the shop. It gets stuck and I have to pry it open. And so I have a lot of practice prying open doors. (laughs) I like it. Celestine so, pushes the door the rest of the way open. As you push the door open, bits and pieces of what appears to be an ancient chair go scattering everywhere. You oh. guess this was suspended in front of the door at some point in an attempt to block it off. Hmm. Barricaded. It's probably not going to be anything good we find here. They barricaded something else, right? Other in Somewhere else there was like a barricade or something. Oh no, they were just left to die. Inside is a single form Uh wrapped in dark clothing and a dark cloak. The form itself is strangely mummified as opposed to completely um, skeletonized. I don't think that's a word. Decomposed. Yeah, skeletonized is a word. Is it? Okay, cool. I feel like I've heard that in my murder true crime shows. Anyway... (laughs) He's been, he's been, he looks a little freeze dried. But yes, the the form appears to be almost mummified, the skin oh. sunken and almost parchment thin. Whoever was here died presumably a long time ago. There isn't much else in the way of furniture. A few uh, bits of what was probably at one point a, an okay looking writing desk are scattered around as well. Oh, Though, that's a dead guy. That's a dead thing. It's dead. Oh, okay. We're running. Uh, Clove like backs away. We're running into quite a few dead bodies on this adventure. It's concerning. A glass vial rests in one hand of the figure, and the other lies a scrap of parchment. And Celestine makes her way in, and we'll pick up the parchment. Uh, Grim will look over the body. Very well. Clove uh, stays Gr- outside. Grim, you can go on ahead and make a medicine check. Okay. In the meantime, Celestine, uh, reading the note, the note is in Dwarven, but you speak that, so it's no problem for you to read it. And it reads, forgive me, dark father of the forge. My toils shall never be enough. Interesting. What do you get on the medicine check, Grim? Uh, 14. With a 14, it's hard to tell exactly how this person died. You can... Tell it's definitely was a dwarf. Is the vial um, beyond empty? That, the vial is empty. I think he killed himself. Beyond that, he's been dead for a considerable length of time. You can't pinpoint it, but you'd guess at least 100 years. And considering the door sure. is barricaded and this note asks for the Dark Father's forgiveness and he has an empty vial in his other hand, seems grim. She smirks at Grim. <laughs> Clove. Uh, I know this is difficult for you, but could you perhaps assist me? Okay. What do you need help with? It's okay. She goes inside. I just wanted to confirm if this... I don't see any signs of injury or wounds on the body. uh, Celestine gets a 15 on a medicine check since she's standing right there. With a medicine check, uh, with a 15, again, you can confirm there's no signs of injury. 
really, it just looks like his body stopped working. At this point, the I mean, flesh is herbalism. too far gone to tell exactly how. With herbalism, you can take a look at the vial. There doesn't seem to be much of whatever it was left, but maybe you can get some idea. I sniff it. Yeah. I roll a 19 on the die for a 22. All right. With a 22, honestly, I was not sure you were going to be able to do that, but you did. Uh, (laughs) With a a 22, you can confirm this is definitely some form of poison. Um, Uh, Yeah, that's that's a poison. Uh, If he drank it, he probably died from it. It must be particularly potent. Mm -hmm. Most dwarves are highly resistant to poison. You believe it's some form of maybe. death cap powder, by the way. Oh, uh, it looks like it was maybe using death cap powder, which is pretty strong. Also, maybe he was a lazy weak dwarf because he followed the Dark Forge Father guy. It's quite possible. Amaranth, is there any magic? One sec. I cast detect magic. Nothing pings to your magical senses. No, nothing magical. So the Dark Father of the Forge is not Torag. That's Droskar. Droskar, yes. Okay. Uh, he's known as Dark Smith, the master of the Dark Furnace. Uh, Torag is the Forge Father, so the Dark Father of the Forge. Seriously? Sounds like an inversion. The, the more, like, for real, the more I hear about this guy, I'm like, evil dwarf doing it. To, to be perfectly honest, Droskar is kind of a Loki-like figure. No he, wonder well, he I is like evil. him so much. <laughs> yeah. He is evil, but he's more like he's more disliked by the dwarves because he's, I think, one of the few that can have chaotic followers. Uh, yeah. And mm. he's very much into like trickery and I, tricking other people into doing your work for you. I love you it and so blah, blah, blah. much. <laughs> Tom Sawyer of the dwarves. I was going to say he's a regular jerk. Tom Sawyer. Yeah. F that guy. <laughs> but Tom I guess let, um, let's search the room. I mean, there might be something else in here of use. Yeah. You yeah. want to make a perception check to anybody who wants to search the room. Can I check the f- door? I- I'm going to wait outside. I go back in, uh, into the hallway and stand and look down the... Essentially not in this room. Would you like Shirking. to help me inspect this door? Uh, I-, I don't know anything about doors. Oh, not a problem. I just thought I'd involve you. I'll just stand here. He just here. nods and makes his way over to the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Grim, I'll go on ahead and allow you a... In this case, probably a perception check, unless you have a lore that's specifically about like construction or something like door that. Door lore. Yeah, yeah door, I'm lore. door lore. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really just looking to see if there's any damage to this door, like someone had tried to break it down, like you okay. barricaded it and then someone tried to break in. Yeah, go to make a perception check then. Sure. Uh, Celestine rolls a perfect 20 for a 25 to search the room. Wow. All right. Wow. So, uh, Rick, what do you get on the perception check for Grim? I roll a three. I get oh. a oh. seven. <laughs> I believe the store is an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to assume I didn't critically fail and believe it's an illusion. No, but, but with a seven, unfortunately, <laughs> you are unable to determine much about the door. You see signs of age, but you don't notice any dents or dings. Beyond that, you're not sure. Celestine taking a look around. Looking through the debris of this room, you don't find anything of real interest. However, as you turn to leave the chamber, you take a last glance over at the mummified figure and underneath his robes, you see a small, just a small uh, indention or something underneath it, indicating that it's actually draped across something. Hmm. She'll walk over and kind and lean over and move the cloak out of the way. Moving the cloak out of the way. There it's is a, a spider. She screams <laughs> bloody murder. Now everyone lunges. knows we're here. <laughs> you know? I'm sorry, it was know also... from your previous scream, <laughs> then... The spider looks up and he's like, thank you. I've been waiting a <laughs> hundred for... years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my I shall grant you Binks. a wish. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll grant you one wish if you don't kill me. <laughs> and then she's like, slam, slam. slam. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I wish that you were dead. <laughs> that was oh, terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> what is she doing? That dead? is terrible. <laughs> Especially yeah, I like that man. somehow Dark Moon Vell has its own equivalent of like the talking uh, salmon or oh whatever God. the heck, heck it is that grants you a wish if you catch it. Mm. Except it's a spider. Yeah, Celestine yeah. <laughs> never looks for it ever. Anyway. So removing the cloak and you find a hammer of in your hands, probably a fairly large size, though honestly, as far as like sledgehammers or something, it's much smaller than that. It's made out of a silvery material. 
Mithril or silver. I have They're giving us so much silver, y'all. I'm very concerned. A fancy hammer. Ooh. <laughs> well, it can't be too fancy. It's not actually magical. It's very shiny. It doesn't it have to be magical fancy. to be good. Glancing over the hammer, you also note in relief carved into the head is basically what appears to be an archway with a flame underneath. Is that the holy symbol of our friend, the Dark Forge Father? The Dark Smith? Yes. Is it made out of mithril? Can, can we roll or anything to see why it's... Or is it just a silver, shiny hammer? Is it a war hammer? Is it a, it is a light hammer. Ah, uh, okay. Then Grim doesn't care. I, I, I was interested when I thought it was a war hammer. I'm still not proficient with it, so it's whatever. Okay, in this case, it is a crafting check to recall knowledge, so I can go ahead and roll that for you. Celestine glancing it over. It's not very high quality, or at least the silver they used wasn't the purest, but it is a silver weapon. It's a light hammer, so that would be a simple weapon. No, it's a martial weapon. weapon. I'm not proficient with it, but it is agile. Oh, then I certainly don't want it. I need non-agile. I was going to say, you need to uh, to find like a silver great axe or something. Why Uh, is the game giving us something silver? So much (laughs) silver. It's still a really cool hammer. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Technically, as a fighter, Estrella's trained with it, too. It's just that she's not a strength-based fighter, so. Yeah. I mean, But I already got the magical short sword, so. Yeah, I mean, Grim can take it. We are finding an astounding amount of loot, though. A lot like, of silver. Very concerning amount of loot. We yeah, haven't found that much actually... silver, have we? This is the first silver thing. Yeah. I thought the sword was silver. No. No. It's magical, oh, okay, but know. it's not silver. Never mind, then take it yeah, back. Yeah, it's just magical. But if you, you want to hold on to silver. it, Celestine, then feel free. I do like it. It's shiny. As tempting as having a silver weapon might be, I'm disinclined to use it. I just want you to know how hard it was for me to resist seeing shiny. And you shiny. should be proud that I didn't. <laughs> Celestine is going to take this hammer, even though she can't use it. You can cool. use it. Just not well. Cool. Keep in mind that it is a low-grade silver hammer. Basically, what this means is that you can't enchant it with any um, item enchantment above level 8. Okay, because okay, I'm going to totally enchant the bejesus <laughs> out of this hammer that I'm not even <laughs> trained in. <laughs> Look, I just wanted to mention it. Hey, when you become a rich adventurer, that's the kind of stuff you spend your money on. That's true. (laughs) Always reinvest your money in your adventuring. Unfortunately, of all the things that I wrote down in my cheat sheet pertaining towards Dwarven Gods, I did not include the favored weapons. Is that the favored weapon of Droskar? Uh, Yes, light hammers are his... Heather is planning her next evil character. If she Heather's character dies, <laughs> we will finally get her to play a dwarf. One of his subdomains is thie- his domains are trickery and thievery. I mean, Weird. Grim definitely wouldn't approve, considering that's the only enemy of his faith. She wouldn't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm more but like the idea that if Celestine dies, another dwarf just pops out of a hole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I follow this guy. I follow this guy, but I'm kind of also wanted by his followers, so can I tag along? <laughs> I was so lazy, even the Church of Droskar is after me. Anyway. <laughs> uh, alrighty. Oh, I was just going to say, Grim will take a second to pray over his body, regardless of the individual's faith. Make sure that he went on to his proper reward. Don't You don't say any prayers to Torag over him, do you? Because uh, I- No, I'll pray to uh, Mogram the Taskmaster. I was about to say, because that would be real rude. <laughs> <laughs> he says only Torag like, prayers. Actually. Dude, that's total cringe. He says from the afterlife. <laughs> no, it's more like Torag. Judge this lazy individual as you see fit. Celestine flicks him on the shoulder. Like, be nice. <laughs> no, no, I worship the whole Dwarven pantheon. I just except ignore for, that one. Except for Draskar. Wow. He's the only one that's evil. <laughs> that's why he's the he's the one ring that uh, he's got that doesn't have a stone in it. Yeah, it's the one yeah, empty bezel. And when we need Droskar to save our butts later, this is why I'll he- do it myself. <laughs> hey, Clove thinks Iomade is pretty cool, so she might step up and help. See, yeah. Iomade and Torag, they're friends. Yeah, they yeah. Are. Fellow we gods of tactics. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably Torag thinks she's a little naive sometimes, but other than that, she's young. Yeah, jeez, um, that's true. Talking about Iomade here, you know, it's just I can't, I can't let that slide. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now we must challenge you to a duel. Yeah, I'm afraid so. 
Uh, I need you to come over here, Rick, so I can slap you with a gauntlet. Um, that's <laughs> you guys have Jason, a rules lore quiz. <laughs> <laughs> At dawn. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> As soon as this quarantine ends, Ross, that'll be the first thing I do. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm ready for it. <laughs> so is the other room the coat closet since apparently the cleric of Droskar committed suicide in the drunk tank? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so opening the door to this chamber, it first of all isn't stuck. And Celestine doesn't notice any traps on it. Opening it up, this does appear to be a simple coat closet. A number Another- of... Well, <laughs> largely moth-eaten Aww. coats, cl- uh, cloaks, and what appears to be a few hats are all <gasps> hats. scattered here. And this None is where you get well. some mothballs. None of them appear to be in any, well, useful condition. Aww. Sad. Ah, I'll blast it with detect magic anyway. I like Can't to hurt. imagine that Amaranth's face just falls because it's like... You know, again, the whole dwarves being Scottish thing, that it's nothing but a wall of flat caps, but they're all decaying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, oh. Oh. <laughs> they also wouldn't be his size. I'm... He's got a big head. I... <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Aaron's don't know, head's joking. not that big. He's so. an egghead. He's smart. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I see where you were going yeah. with that. Scanning, the, or scanning around you with detect magic, you detect no magical presence here. Other than, of course, the ones <sighs> you already accounted for. No, no magic here either. We should still look in here because maybe something's hidden in all the decaying clothing. Go, Clove, can you want to make a perception check? She rolls a 16 on the die for a 22. Apparently I'm rolling 22s tonight. <laughs> just to state it, Estrella has been like guarding the back just this whole time, letting everybody kind of do their thing and making sure nothing comes up behind us. Sounds Smart. good. That's appreciated. Taking a look around... Honestly, Chloe's first instinct is probably to just try to find some useful stuff in here, um, as she just generally mm-hmm. is used to scrounging for useful stuff wherever she goes. Mm-hmm. You're very disappointed at all of this just being utter junk. Oh. As you turn to crestfallenly walk away out of this room, you see a small mushroom in the corner. <gasps> hey. A mushroom. I pick it. Is it the right kind? You pick it up. And immediately recognize it as an iron blue mushroom. I was I so waiting it for it to be like some contact poisonous mushroom. <laughs> I know about mushrooms. I would have recognized it before. It's some highly it, specialized but... mimic. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I found another mushroom. Oh, man. I haven't used a mimic uh, yet. Well done. So now we have three. Yes. And we needed seven, correct? Hmm. We're almost so halfway more. to our goal. So down the other hallway or into the main church. Hallway. Yes, I think the hallway too. The church probably has bad stuff in it because that's where bad stuff would probably hang out if it was just going to wait on us. Well, if you're going to have a large number of creatures there, it's a large enough area. I will point out that you will be leaving the double doors that leave into the nave behind you. Yeah, but it's a defense. Um, the hallway is only five feet wide, yes? Yes, this is true. I feel like this hallway is a defensible position. So that way, if we're outflanked. But if we enter into the nave, it's a wide open space. So if there's anything down this hallway, be able to circle around behind us easier. You are very, very paranoid, sir. It's tactical. Yes, this is all trained to me by the uh, Guardians of the Forge of Torag. And so still very, very paranoid. I only wish more of you use shields. And by that I meant I only wish any of you use shields. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the paladin... Lady Sirthana, she has a shield and it's really bright and shiny and it has Iomide symbol on it. I think it's pretty neat, but I don't know how to use shields. It's no surprise. Iomide is known for her tactical genius as well, and her paladins Mm. oftentimes mirror that. Well, I'm just a halfling and typically it's easier for me to just move out of the way than for me to try and block something coming down at me. I can understand. Although, think about it from the Dwarven perspective that works for the Halfling as well. You're so small already, you wouldn't need much of a shield to cover you. Yeah, Some of us just want to use our down? extra action to attack things and waste it on raising a shield. I'm still salty about that rule. Anyway. <laughs> when we get back, I have a book on Phalanx fighting that I think you should read. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Phalanx fighting. <laughs> His actual mission is to convert us to shield fighters. It's true. <laughs> All of us, even Amaranth. <laughs> he gives you a buckler. Oh, gosh. You're, you it can only cast the shield spell. 
from now on. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, that'd work. <laughs> we'll add that to the list. Lock. So, so whenever we get around to playing our all Jagari party, they also have to have all shields oh, so that God. they can do <laughs> Felix fighting. All Jagari, you know, they just be swashbucklers. All the That's swash. True. We should just play identical quintuplets, and each one of us has a different class, but we have max ranks and bluffs, so we can all pretend to be each other at all times. Oh my yeah. god, that's amazing. I love this idea. Wow. Okay, the next one shot we do, that's what we're doing. I just don't want to be the game master that has to sort the bait out. <laughs> every, every single time that they get a feat, they all have to take the same teamwork feat of every level, so they're just perfectly coordinated. So here's the best part. We make it even worse. All of us have to have the same letter in our name too, oh, so it's yeah. even more confusing for the oh, GM. Like Brian and Brent and Brandon and Brentley and and Brain uh, yeah. and, Bri- and Brian, oh, but spelled with a Y. Yeah, <laughs> it's all Brian. Oh, it's true. Anyway, but you all continue right, so. down the hallway. It stretches ahead, honestly, no more than maybe another five feet past the initial range of Celestine's vision from when she first turned the corner. So, really, there's only the two doors at the end of the hall here. So, right or left? Let's start left. So you're facing south, so left would bring you east. Alrighty. And so you open the left-hand door. Yes. If there's a monster inside, remember, Grim picked it. (laughs) (laughs) That's fine. I'll mourn your passing. (laughs) (laughs) So, Celestine, you turn, approach the door, raise your hand to open it. There's a spider. You stop for a moment, withdraw your hand... Because you note that the doorknob is tilted in a in a unusual direction. It's like something is pulling it straight up. You can tell it's mm. physically being drawn up. Like the metal mm. of the doorknob is actually bending to a slight degree. Is it trapped? You're certain it is. Ooh. Ooh, trap. I, I will attempt to disable the trap. Do I roll this? We will all take a, go to a safe distance. Uh, wow. Mm-hmm. Do I roll this or do you roll this, Ross? Yes. Everyone retreat down the hallway. Let's be real, though. This is Heather Mythos time. It's going to be fine. (laughs) You knew there were going to be traps if there were kobolds involved. It's true. Right? Yeah. So I roll a 13 for a 20 on my trickery check. Trickery? Thievery? Thievery. Thievery. Sorry. (laughs) It should have been trickery. I like trickery. I mean, it's tricksy thievery. It's tricksy. you be... (laughs) It's tricksy, tricksy. Tri- okay. Um, so you begin to undo the... You think that there's a rope pulling up on the other side of the of the doorknob here. So you s- begin by slowly opening the door just a little bit. And you think you've managed to do that much without really triggering it. That you actually need to make multiple thievery checks to mm. disarm traps. And it's doom. a big old hazard. It's a big one. So mm. I'm going to go on ahead and need another thievery check from you. I roll a 10 for a 17. I don't suppose we could aid on this, could we? Unfortunately, not. no. You first of all would need to have thieves tools in addition. And secondly, there can only really be one person that's actually at the door at this point. I say that every time she has to make another check, we move five feet further down the hallway. (laughs) Yes, Yes, we do. We're just slowly sidling back the longer it takes her to disable this. Hey, guess what I need to use to disable this trap? A dwarf face. (laughs) (laughs) That seems unlikely. Um... I was going to say she pops open like a little side panel and there's like a dwarf scanning <laughs> face. You know? Like a retinal scan, retinal but it's for scan, the face. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in Starfinder. <laughs> but uh, sorry, was a 17 total you said? Yes. So you're able to pick prod and poke at the rope that's you think suspending some debris in a net above the uh, above the doorway here. You're able to gently lower it to the ground, and you don't think the trap's going to hurt you at this point. She looks down the hallway at all of her companions, like, first of all, like, really, guys? We're doing that thing where we poke (laughs) one head up on top of the other all the way around with Amaranth on top, just like, thumbs up. Nice. It's all clear. There's no need to take any unnecessary risk for the rest of us. Uh, Your faith in me is astounding. (laughs) I assume you learned that in tactics to... Limit death by trap? 
Much like in any form of gambling, you can have faith in things, but you should always hold a few chips in reserve. So if I had failed and been crushed to death, what would you do next? Just shove amaranth through the door? No, we'd come help you be unburied. (laughs) And then I'm pretty strong. We'd inter you in the yard as far away from the spiders as possible. That's <laughs> all <laughs> 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 to you. And then we would the sing. The spiders can't see my face, you. but that's the look Celestine is giving Grim. None of us can see your face either. It's hidden in it's the true. box. <laughs> she's very. She's she's giving him kind of a scowl. <laughs> we would have rushed forward to rescue you. Well, what? But what, you didn't what's die, in the so door? Okay. She pushes open the door. You're really good at opening doors. You have that in common. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're oh, also yeah. good at opening doors. <laughs> hey, I've defeated two doors in this adventure so far. It's true. Pushing open the door, you see what appears to be maybe a small bedroom suite. The room you first enter into is more of a maybe just more of an antechamber or living room or kitchen or some combination thereof. There's a single table, a pair of chairs, both of which seem to be, or rather all three of which seem to be in relatively good condition. Resting atop the table is a half-eaten razor crow. Mm, Next to this is a crude knife covered in, coated in blood. Yummy. You look to your right and of course the uh, you drop the debris trap to the right-hand side of the door, effectively harmlessly, so she shouldn't have to worry about Alerting that. Alerting all the kobolds inside. Well, I mean, you dropped it silently. She's already screamed, and we've had loud conversations. If the kobolds don't know we're here by now, then they deserve to get surprised. Yeah, we just broke open a door a minute ago. Yeah. True. However, you make your way into the room... And see that there is an open doorway that leads into a smaller chamber, maybe five feet by ten feet. And I will need everybody in the party to roll a perception check. Is anybody else thinking that maybe this razor crow might have been the third razor crow of our hobgoblin friend? No, but I am now. Interesting thought. I I think they're native to the region, too. Mm. There's a nat one. There's a not nat one. Nat one for a seven for Clove. That's a 15 for an 18 for me, Amaranth. Celestine? Rolls a uh, 13 for an 18. Astrea? Roll a 7 for a 13. And Grim? A 13 for a 17. Celestine, you and, strangely enough, Amaranth, you hear. Celestine, you more see. A lizard-like head poke back around from the doorway of the next room before the creature pops out spear in hand. It speaks something in a tongue you're not, you don't understand as it begins to charge towards you. And I will go in and use that as initiative for the party. I knew it. Bum, bum, bum. Uh oh. He's dead. So, um, Amaranth and Celestine, which one of you would prefer to go first? Probably Celestine. I mean, I have the higher perception if we're going to do it that way, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got only got a three perception. Yeah, I mean, technically you can do it however you want, but if that's how you want to do it, that's well, fine. Well, and she entered the room first, I think, too, so... Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Celestine, you have the first initiative. So oh! there's a little kobold chittering at me in Draconic, and it has there's a spear. There's a bipedal lizard-like creature. You, pr- you know, Oh, wait, no, you made the roll earlier. Yes, there's a kobold in front of you. It has a spear. It is chittering at you. You have zero idea what it's saying. Does anybody in the party speak Draconic? Nope. I don't. Nope. No. All right, well... Uh, Our only option is to kill. Well, yeah, I was about to say, because if nobody says anything about what it's saying and it's coming at me with a spear, Celestine's going to swing. Sounds like a plan. All right, Celestine, <laughs> going ahead and make an attack roll. Celestine? Wait, how did Amaranth see this thing? <laughs> I heard it. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Uh, Celestine rolls a 19 for a 26. Jeez, a uh, twenty-six girl. hits your target. Uh, uh, is it flat, flat-footed, or since it popped out at us, do I get? Is it? Aware? I'm going to say no in this case. Um, yeah, you walked into the room without necessarily like stealthing, so I'm going to say at the very least it heard you open the door. Well, and, like, and it probably inside. heard me fiddling with the trap and everything too. Um, yeah, it also probably least, noticed yeah. the light source you brought in here. I uh, I do six points of damage. Nice. You swing, slicing oh. across the kobold's chest. 
blood comes out as it staggers back from the hit, though it still stands. Roll a 10, which gets me a 17, but after the minus five, that would be a 12. With a 12, you swipe again, trying to simply cut through its brain, but you miss entirely as it duck, ducks out of the way. Um, with my last move, I'm going to move five feet back, just so it's not just me and this kobold swinging at each other in a doorway. Mm. So... There we go. Sounds good. So Celestine takes a step back, and from there we go to Amaranth. Um, okay, I need to get eyes on this so that I can attack it, which is going to be a challenge because the only way I could do that is to step into the room, and then that will put me in the melee. You could delay. Um, I may have to delay and let it move forward. Yes, I'll delay. Okay. So Amaranth goes on and delays. Grim, it's your turn. There's a kobold trying to stab me with a stick. Uh, Grim will go ahead and dart into the room, take like a hard right turn as he steps into the room into the corner there. Since I okay, I can kind of tell that Amaranth is waiting to get line on this and hopefully we can lure it out into the open. Uh, I'll use my second action to raise my shield and I'll use my third action to do a jig. <laughs> yeah, I really got nothing for that third action, unfortunately, so... Throw a hatchet. <laughs> uh, you'd have to pull it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. I mean, Never mind. You could pull a hatchet if you want to. No, nah, because I'd have to drop my hammer, and I'd rather have my hammer in hand in case it comes out at us. Yeah, that makes sense. Although it's probably going to run given how outnumbered it is. Mm. To where? Oh, yeah, that's right. There's no other exit from that here, is there? Love. Not that you can see, no. Poor guy. Yeah. This poor guy's so, probably just like, what the hell are y'all doing in my room? Don't you knock? There's a trap there for a reason. And then I'm like, stab. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, there was a failure to communicate. So, I mean, clearly we don't even speak his language. Yeah, yeah, no. that, that's the joke. No. <laughs> <laughs> he just rushes uh, out. He's like, finally, you've come to save me. I've got this magic spear for you. And then we start stabbing him. <laughs> oh, I oh, you <laughs> God, we always make it so sad. <laughs> oh, wow. Especially since this group has a somewhat soft spot for kobolds. I mean, the, the group does. The party doesn't necessarily. I know. Yeah, the party knows nothing about them. <laughs> Kobold, the or, sorry, Clove has a soft spot for everything. The creature is cunning enough to know softy. that it's probably more defensible for it to stay in the corner in its bedroom rather than go out Damn. and be surrounded by three creatures taller than it is. So afraid of. it's just like, you know what? No, nah, I don't like that idea. So it's going to go on ahead and use a free action to drop its spear. It's then going to pull a crossbow from its belt. Oh, wow. Uh, use an action to load it. Yikes. And then aim directly at Celestine before shooting. Oi. <laughs> I mean, you did just stab it. <laughs> oof. Would be great, though. Oh, don't say oof. <laughs> Okay, ouch. Uh, the kobold lets out with a bolt that streaks towards you with a 24 to hit. Ow, yes. Dorag, call upon my oh, yeah. vengeance strike since both of them are within 15 feet of me. So uh, knock the first three points of damage off of that. There you go. Do you have the uh, ranged um, rep reprisal ability, the feat for that? No, uh, my first level feat gave me the domain spell for, or the focus, um, domain focus power for my deity, yeah, which hasn't yeah. come up yet, but. Fair enough. It may. So the crossbow bolt slams into your shoulder. It would normally do six points of damage. Mm -hmm. Fortuitously, mm -hmm. a silvery gray shield pops up between you and the bolt, which mitigates some of that. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could get like a throwing returning hammer or something in the ranged version of that, so I could just hurl hammers at people within 15 feet of me anytime yeah. they strike an ally. Okay, Truly cool. amazing. That would Whatever. be pretty awesome. If it ain't broke, yeah. don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. fair. That classic dwarven phrase. <laughs> so from there, um, Amrith, do you want to re-enter? I suppose I shall re-enter. Um, if I take a step forward, am I ab able to like see its shin or something to get a spell off on it? Uh, yep. I cast Electric Arc. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rolling. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, so it gets to make a reflex. Are you gonna take signature spell? I do. I should seriously take signature spell with this. Uh, yeah, he does need to make a reflex save. DC of that is 17. 
He gets a 19. Oh, okay, fine. He'll take half damage. So, yeah, Bzzz. he ducks back behind the wall. So some of it still sizzles off onto him. Uh, so that's eight <laughs> points, so he'll take four. Okay. He sizzles for a moment, staggering back, though, once again, still has some fight left in him. And from there, we go to Estrella. Well, Estrella hears all the commotion and decides she is going to rush into the room, uh, sword drawn. So and you can move 20 feet to stand right in front of the creature. Then Estrella will strike down at the creature. Okay. For a 27, because I rolled a 17. Oh, wow. <laughs> a 27 strikes your target, yes. <laughs> One point of damage. Oh. Very well. Devastating. You slice into its left arm, uh, hitting its bicep, you think. That definitely hurt it as it hisses with the pain, but it keeps fighting. You have an action remaining. And there's no chance this is a good kobold? In my experience, no. I don't know. Okay. She swings again. All right. Okay. So this weapon is agile, correct? Yes. I rolled a 15. That would have given me a 25 minus four. Yep. Okay. 21. 21 also hits your target as you stab in again. Nice. It's a little better. Three points of damage. Striking a second time, this time catching it in the stomach. It looks at you with a somewhat puzzled expression, blood pouring forth from the wound as it shakes its head, still pressing onto the fight. You don't know how much fight it's got left in it, though. As we go from Estrella to Clove. Um, please stop fighting us. The creature She's does gonna not She's going to swing respond. around the corner? Okay. It will get a she cover bonus, the corner. but you can't attack. Yeah. I rolled a 17 on the dice, which gives me oh, a big number. Hold on. Man, we're wrecking this thing's day. A 24? A 24 strikes your target, yeah. Uh, for six damage. As you swipe in with your machete, you cut across the thing's chest in the opposite direction that uh, Celestine had hit earlier. Some more blood goes flying, and you're certain you hit something vital as the thing doesn't even have time to necessarily react before the kobold falls to the ground. Oh, God. Blood pooling on the ground below uh, it. Can I stabilize this kobold with a medicine or a, an herbalism or a nature is, check? It is dead. You oh, sad. cannot. Yeah. Uh, she mm -hmm. bursts into tears. <laughs> I, I, I figure Estrella, she immediately she, like sheathes her sword and she like goes over to comfort you. I mean, it, it's self-defense. It I didn't want to do that either, it but sometimes you just got to. Yes, it was attempting to kill us. Yeah, but, but it, it so said sad. something. For, for all we know, he was trying to say something and couldn't. Yes, well, generally speaking, if you're trying to be peaceful, you don't jump out of a room with a spear. We broke into the room. <laughs> she pats you on the back. <laughs> well, okay. Maybe it just means we got to learn some more languages. I only know one. <laughs> what? Stupid Jesus. bad education. <laughs> <laughs> Celestine has no idea how to handle this and just kind of starts glancing <laughs> over the kobold like, got anything valuable? Usually it's okay. not. <laughs> usually it's so. not clove that kills the things. <laughs> Estrella is just going to keep comforting her. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I think this is the first thing that Clove has actually killed herself. Uh, yeah, rage. without raging. Yeah. Clove, perhaps you'd like to uh, bandage up Celestine. Okay. She's injured and I'm certain that she could use your assistance. Okay. Clove gets her tools out and is happy to have something to distract herself with. Yeah. You haven't bandaged Celestine recently, have you? I don't, I don't think I've ever bandaged anyone. So yeah, uh, I think yeah, I could you do did it. in the last episode. I just can't remember yeah. who. And you can't do it again for an hour hmm. on that I person. On that person, I but I can't remember who it was. You well, I'm I mean, to it say might it was have been me because I'm the one that almost got eaten by a wolf. Oh yeah, I think it might. But have it's been, been an hour since then. Has it? It's been I an hour been since not. we fought wolves. No, I well, think it's been okay. about thirty or forty minutes because we did three. 10 minute rests. I mean, you've also searched several rooms by now. Yeah, I had to climb a tower. Yeah. Well, there was yeah. that too. Yeah, it's completely GM's discretion how many. I mean, it doesn't specifically say how long it takes to search a room, but you have been very careful to note every single room you've been in. So I'm going to go in and say it's been about an hour. All okay. right, I patch. I do okay on my patching. I roll a five. 
For a 19? I roll a 15 for a 19. Not I was going to say, I was like, weird. how? What? I was about to say, Jesus yeah, Christ. That, that was a heck of a bonus right there. <laughs> I rolled a 15 for a 19. Uh, I forgot that I found these plus five medicine healers. <laughs> it's 15, so you get 2d8 hit points back. My dice like you. You get a 13 hit points well, back. Well, considering I was wow. only down by three, you did real good. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she like feels overwraps better. you. <laughs> She's like yeah. the gentlest soul who's ever sold. Who just killed her first creature. She's very sad about it. So Celestine looks much more like a mummy than she did a moment ago. <laughs> <laughs> I have like, oh, no, no, I found these tools. I don't be like if they were mine. It's like pink bandages and there's like flowers. <laughs> on a little Hello Kitty <laughs> action on there. <laughs> but we found these. So they just say property of Jagari. <laughs> All of the bandages have the Jagari crest on them. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I, I'm was loving actually this idea. Jagari. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving this idea of the Jagari in the future. Actually, are the secret people who run Abadar Core? Yes. You know? Okay. <laughs> so, um, what's on the kobold? As far as what's on the kobold, the kobold is carrying a crossbow. It has 19 bolts remaining. Wow. It used one that. Clove had to pull out of Celestine, but Ow. Uh, it has a suit of leather armor, a short sword, and a snare kit. That makes sense. And also, maybe the hunter lady would like to have a snare kit. I, yeah, I mean, I can take a snare kit, set traps, and it's in your inventory. Sweet. Yeah. Um, is there anything of use in the bedroom and the little room it was hiding in, which is either I'm make another perception check? Is it a closet? The, or I'm what? gonna just say it's the closet of this room. Yes, it was originally a closet. Um, in this case, it was large enough for the kobold to have a sleeping mat. This sleeping mat is not rotted at the very least, though it's made primarily out of what appears to be bits of fur and some pelts for blankets. It seems to be a mixture of a variety of different animals as well. Um, Grim, will you say a prayer for this kobold too? Oh, gosh. Certainly. Celestine <laughs> looks over at Grim. To see if he's gonna break Celeste or break uh, Clove's little heart. <laughs> She's got the saddest little face. Grim makes his way over. Yay! Kneels down next to the kobold. For asthma, I don't often pray to you, but <laughs> I hope that this kobold gets what he deserves in his next life. Oh, wow! <laughs> Celestine nudges oh. Grim in the shoulder and looks at him like seriously. Amaranth is just looking like, oh my goodness, that was very appropriate, probably, but also hilariously insincere. <laughs> I'm certain that he will be judged justly. Okay. And if we were mistaken and he was a good kobold, I'm certain that he will go to a fine afterlife with dragons ponies. aplenty. Yes. Good Dream dragons. dragons. Okay. That's, Where that the makes good me feel better. Go. Yes. Grim leans over towards Celestine and Dwarven. He wasn't a good kobold. <laughs> <laughs> yes! she, she looks down at him and tries not to laugh and probably turns it into a little cough. <laughs> Quick question. Does uh, does Celestine, sp or sorry, does uh, Grim speak Elven? Uh, no. Astral? I speak Elven. Astral? I assume that uh, I assume Celestine the elf does. Speaks elf yeah. thing. <laughs> I could not. You don't know me. I forgot. I, I like to, to assume I speak Kelvin. So Estrella, I like to think that Amaranth just volunteers that out of nowhere. He's just like, I speak Kelvin. <laughs> so I, I'm going to say that Estrella kind of under her breath in Elven because she just assumes that uh, she assumes Grim doesn't speak it. Well, that was a little rude. Does she speak Dwarven? <laughs> No, she's being elven. Oh, yeah, but did she? But no, how would you understand he spoke that in Dwarven? His prayer was oh. a little rude, is I think what she's saying. Yeah. Well. Oh, no, wait. His prayer was in yeah. common, but he his yeah. he was yeah, not a good prayer was in common. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the common after wasn't very nice either, Celestine says in Elvish and keeps poking around the room. You guys speak too many weird languages. I feel like you're keeping a secret from me. Oh. oh, don't, don't worry, Clove. They Whenever are. you turn uh. 205 years old, you'll speak many languages also. If I was 205, I'd be dead. <laughs> or a really strong druid. I don't know if they still get that. So, Celestine, what do you get on that perception check? I rolled a 15 for a 20. Okay. If you would like, 
Clove, I would be happy to teach you Dwarven. Or Ooh. if you're concerned about the goblins in the region, I could teach you that as well. I'm not really concerned about goblins, but I like to learn things, so Dwarven or Goblin would be fun to learn. Well, I would be more than happy to teach you. I'm still teaching uh, letters to my daughter, granddaughter, so hmm. it'd be good work for her as well. Nice. Oh, okay. That's an adorable image. We make a play date for later. (laughs) Yeah, just the two of them sitting there with this tiny. I can only imagine how small a nine-year-old dwarf is. Yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah, just itty bitty. Yeah. Although she's nine and still learning level letters, I have questions. Uh, They mature slower. I guess. Well, actually, they mature. They mature at the same speed. Well, actually, I think she's seven and not nine. And also, you know, for those first couple of years, she was very much in poverty mm, true. Mm. so didn't get a proper education fair hence uh, Grimm's whole homeschooling mm. <laughs> Celestine you take a look through the kobold's meager belongings or at least at first you suspect their meager belongings however there's a small cache mm. mostly hidden underneath the, the sleeping mat that this kobold had if this kobold had s- platinum pieces Celestine is done <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I'm just waiting for him to have a learn common, but it's like in Kobold or whatever. And it's just got like, you know, little letters for him to trace. He was trying Jessica, real hard. Jessica, hit him real hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him lightly. Yeah. You it's do the find a Syrian stone learning process. Anyway. What's, what's in oh. the pouch? <laughs> yeah. You do find a coin pouch, and inside there are a wide variety of coins. In this case, 62. Silver pieces. Okay, I was about to be like, if this kobold has 62 gold, I Celestine's done. That's it. Hey, yeah. that is still 6.2 gold. I Celestine's mean, not done. She's like, we gotta loot all these guys. <laughs> it's still a lot of money, but it's definitely not like, okay, he's just rolling he's in a gold. Ton this of money. kobold was quite wealthy, all things considered. Is it possible that there was a lot of leftover currency left lying around? Where would he have found all of this? Whatever seems to have happened here seems to have been sudden enough and desperate enough that one of the, I'm going to assume priests here, locked himself in a closet and poisoned himself rather than be taken. I don't imagine that the dwarves had time to leave, let alone take what they had with them here. What would scare a dwarf of a dark deity enough to do that? I'm going to say a hard day's work. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Speaking speaking to that, Grim's got these like one-liners, man. (laughs) It's possible that the priests of Torag returned to retake this place, although I would imagine in that case they would have occupied it. I understand that these two deities don't get along, but is it that violent? Would it be better to commit suicide than be taken by the priests of Torag? No, it also depends on when this was. Maybe they dug too deep and something terrible came. It's quite possible. It oh, wouldn't God, be the first Bell time Rock. that that's happened. Mm-hmm. In addition to the coin pouch, um, Celestine, you also find a small box. Pulling this out, it is made out of sturdy steel. Ooh. Inside are a number of extremely well-made tools. Cool. Ooh. What kind of These tools? These are a number of chisels, hammers, and a variety of other things you need for a stonemason. It's a set of sterling stonemason tools. Hmm. Cool. And finally, tucked away underneath the kobold's pillow is Aww. a circular, perfectly cut ruby. Ooh. Wow. The ruby itself is worth 35 gold pieces. Ooh. Wow. wow. We are going to yeah. buy Falcon Color. <laughs> Grim just kind of nods. Maybe he was attempting to sleep on his treasures like the dragons do. Oh, that's so cute. Hmm. Look what you Kobolds did. Do their best Stop to making her cry. To emulate <laughs> dragon kind. How big is this ruby? The ruby itself is about the size of your thumbnail. So it's not like it's huge, but it is certainly substantial enough. Well, I'm kind of curious why this one is separate. Maybe he's just likes his privacy. Perhaps. Maybe he was supposed to be guarding the entrance and he was napping. We did catch him in his bedroom and the trap was active. Hmm. Maybe that trap was not intended for us. Well, it could have been possibly 
What, the warg? Or maybe this one was on the outs from the rest of his tribe. Mm. He has an awful lot of trinkets to be on the outs. Unless he stole all of that. Yes. Well, regardless, we have confirmed kobolds, and I believe I saw tracks for more than just this one, so... Well, we have one more room in this hallway, and then the main church. I think we should check the door on the other side of the hall, and then approach the nave. Okay. Are you all right, Clove? Yeah, it's just sad. I understand. But you did well to defend all of us. Thank you. You're welcome. He just kind of nods. Pat you on the elbow. Is the cobalt spear like <laughs> neat or is it just like a pointed stick? I mean, it does have an iron head. Does anyone want to take that crossbow? Nope. nope. I've already got one. Take okay. it to sell it. Well, I mean, yeah, we're going to take it to sell oh, okay. it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's worth three freaking gold. Yeah, we're selling that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> but if you want to want, I'm seriously it, starting to get on board with plan. Just buy the city and tell the lumber consortium to GTFO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, with the planet if a pieces, crossbow we might. Costs three gold, though. <laughs> that's that's the thing. It's a, definitely a plan, though. Maybe you'll get there. We'll see. <laughs> I suppose our listeners will have to listen on to find out. That's true. Yes. I don't know. Just I'm, all I know is I'm a lot closer with uh, taking the two platinum pieces from that as my share. I am two. Yep, sixty percent of the way to getting my full plate. <laughs> wow. Which is what I'm waiting for. <laughs> yep. I guess we'll mm-hmm. make our way across the hall. Will you go to the other side? Honestly, it's a very short walk, not even five mm-hmm. feet. There is a single door that leads into the chamber. Approaching it, you don't sense any traps. Celestine. Uh, though, oh, oh, though. The door here does seem to be in a state of disrepair. Unlike most of the other interior doors, except for the one that you saw that led to all the bats, this door is heavily chipped and worn and honestly near broken. Will it open or do we have to break it down? You don't see why it wouldn't open. Celestine opens it. You push it open. I mean, it scrapes against the bottom of the floor here, but you still open it without much trouble. The room beyond is a reflection of the state of the door. It is in terrible condition. Larger chunks of the ceiling here have fallen away, and the shelves of what appear to have once been a library are for the most part warped and worn. The moment you open the door, you are assaulted with the pungent odor of a number of spores and mold and fungi that cover almost the entirety of the chamber here. Jackpot? Fungus. Yuck. In one corner, there is a pool of stagnant water. Oh, mosquito haven. Celestine kind of looks back over her shoulder at Clove, who likes this kind of thing. Well, mushrooms. Oh, good. I want to look at them. Maybe we should look if there's danger first. Sure. So I guess Clove and Celestine are going to the room first? I mean, uh, Cel- uh, no. Th- there's, okay. I'm so going. I- there's gross mold and stagnant water and crap in there. Grim will make <laughs> his way forward. Definitely nod back towards Amaranth. You may wish to wait outside. Oh, I was planning to. Celestine <laughs> nods at him like, yeah. <laughs> Grim will make his way in, watching out for, I don't know, veggie pygmies. Ah. <laughs> Grim, Clove, you make your way inside. Truthfully, most everything here seems to be in a state of ruin and decay. The books are, honestly, you can't even tell what they were by the titles, let alone what mm. contents they might have inside. And as a librarian, it really hurts me to say that. Um, So much knowledge lost. And beyond that, I will also need a perception check from both Grim and Clove. I rolled a two (laughs) for an eight. All right. I rolled a one for a five. Ouch. Do you have a hero point? I don't have any hero Uh, points. You know what? So I say, you know what I do? Before, right? I will go. I will go ahead and use my hero point to re-roll that because f that noise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I roll a twenty <laughs> nice. Nice. for that a twenty-four. Well used. Solid use. Because I'm God. a big GD hero. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. 
So, Clove, you begin approaching and immediately start cataloging all the various forms of fungi that you see here. The mold, the uh, the spores, everything that you can notice. You don't immediately see any iron blue mushrooms, which of course is what you're primarily looking for. Though there's a variety of other species here of both medicinal and less savory qualities. I'll take medicinal ones. I guess I'll you take the less savory. You see her begin to set about her work. <laughs> <laughs> Grim, you see her begin to set about her work. Before you notice in the southwest corner, the pool of what you thought initially was water begins to oh. move. Uh-oh. Hello. Oh, no. Oh, no. The oh, no. mold covering it seems to congeal into a sort of just... Mass uh, of quivering. Uh, 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 nope, I'm out. I'm out. Slime. I can't sneak attack mold. this. I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> and we will pick Whoa. it up there. Oh, next God, time. no mushrooms. No. no! <laughs> <laughs> this one's no. a button mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> you have it in your hand, you just turn around, there's this ooze just like going ah. up. <laughs> and those were her last words. <laughs> oh, Find the Path Ventures is an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. Hollow's Last Hope is copyright 2007. Hollow's Last Hope and the Game Mastery module line are trademarks of Paizo. All Game Mastery images are property of Paizo and used with permission.